Ukraine's president, Petro Poroshenko, says he's, quote, very disappointed by France's decision to go ahead anyway with a deal to sell two Mistral warships to Russia, a decision that this week has triggered a cross-channel tiff between Paris and London. It's a rather awkward parliamentary report for the UK. The Committees on Arms Export Controls has announced that 251 export licenses are still in place for Russia. All while the British Prime Minister has been talking tough against Moscow and calling for a Europe-wide ban on such arms sales. MPs are calling for clarification. I think it is absolutely right to tighten up immediately our policy on arms exports to Russia and I believe that the Prime Minister it appears, has now adopted a much stronger and wider policy of arms exports to Russia being subject to an embargo. But I'm in the process of trying to clarify that. Permits still in place cover the sale of small arms ammunition, body armour and military communications equipment. Making it all the more embarrassing, the report comes just two days after David Cameron took France to task for their ongoing sale of Mistral warships to Russia. Frankly, in this country, it would be unthinkable to fulfil an order like the one uh, outstanding uh, that the French have. But we need to put the pressure on with all our partners to say that we cannot go on doing business as usual with a country when it's behaving in this way. France, however, points out that people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius has criticised London for remaining a haven for Russian oligarchs. Meanwhile, David Cameron insists no embargoes have been breached but says he'll review all of the arms deals. All right, and uh, joining us from Alphen in the Netherlands, Julian Lindley, French advisor to the UK Chief of Defence Staff and senior fellow at the Institute of Statecraft. Uh, we heard the French Foreign Minister again this Thursday morning say uh, that uh, the London should concentrate on its own oligarchs before pointing fingers at Paris. Should France be honouring that 1.1 billion euro contract? No. Uh, and frankly, uh, Britain needs to sort its uh, arms control regime out as well. It's inconceivable at this moment, given what's happened, that France is considering selling or transferring two warships, advanced warships, which would give Russia an entirely new military capability it's never had before, the ability to launch special and specialised forces from the sea. Uh, this is not the moment to be doing that. But frankly, I don't blame France. This is just the latest case of every European EU member state saying, after you, please. We don't, we shouldn't do business as usual, i.e. you, France, you, Germany, shouldn't do business as usual. But we, Britain, kind of will carry on business as usual. Until there is solidarity, until there is a willingness to accept that sanctions on Russia will cause a vulnerable European economy pain and that that pain is shared equitably across EU member states, then frankly, this game of after you please will go on and frankly, President Putin will laugh. Now, when the day began, a lot of people agree with you, but we have seen now that uh, there is now this stepped up talk. Is it in any way changing your point of view when we hear about Europe possibly closing uh, state-controlled uh, Russian banks to uh, its money markets, that there really is a new momentum to punish Vladimir Putin? No, I, I've seen that document. In fact, it's a commission document, and it clearly is an attempt uh, by certain member states to pay, make London pay a disproportionate price for any sanctions regime. It targets, it targets what is effectively a £6 billion uh, market that works through London and would damage London quite gravely if carried out in its current format. It's another case of, of, of people trying to avoid the fundamental realities of how do we sanction Russia without hurting our vulnerable economies too much and share the pain. Until the oil and gas sector is really targeted, which represents 68% of Russian revenues, then we are playing with this. We are playing at the margins of tragedy. And with 40,000 Russian troops on the border, with President Poroshenko ordering a full mobilization today, which has not been reported, uh, I fear we are moving into an August crisis. And, and as ever, we, the EU, are sleepwalking into it.
Uh, an August crisis? Are you suggesting that the events of exactly 100 years ago could repeat themselves, a, a major European war? Well, certainly, I can't predict that a major war would take place. But given the mobilization in Ukraine, given the uncertainty and instability in eastern Ukraine, given the location of Russian troops moving up in the last 12 hours in small groups to the Russian border, given that in the past, look at Georgia in 2008, Russia has tended to act while the rest of Europe slumbers. One cannot rule out President Putin, who said that we need to resolve this crisis, that he would resolve this crisis in a very aggressive way, in a very Russian way, dare I say. I hope it doesn't happen. I have no inside knowledge on this, and I desperately hope we can get some peace talks moving uh, that can find a settlement that's acceptable to all the parties to the conflict. But right now, we're in a dangerous vacuum where people are talking too much and doing too little. Uh, talking too much, doing too little. You're saying that what Europe should be doing is a concerted effort when it comes to targeting the oil and gas sector. Well, what I'd first like to see is a concerted US-EU peace effort, a peace drive with Moscow, with Kiev, to find a new constitution for Ukraine that is acceptable to all the peoples in Ukraine. That is where the settlement of this conflict must come. It must not involve outside influences, but must be a new Ukraine that is acceptable to all of its citizens. I see none of that. At the same time, I see talk of sanctions, but I see EU member states as ever playing games with each other, frankly. This spat this week over the Mistrals, the counter spat from France, from, uh, from Royal Fabius about the British, uh, the Germans not wanting to, to really involve the oil and gas sector because it might involve 25,000 German jobs uh, if there was a real sanctions campaign. As I've said, until we Europeans, in solidarity, A, come up with a way of pushing the peace process forward, and B, hold a series of sanctions which are credible in terms of the impact that they would have on Moscow and that Moscow believes them to be credible, then this dangerous vacuum, this dangerous summer vacuum will continue. Julian Lindley French, many thanks for joining us from Alphen in the Netherlands. It's, of course, a situation we'll continue to monitor. Many thanks for being uh, with us. It's a very 